Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Orbit Garin Drilling's Fiscal 2022 Fourth Quarter and Year End Results Conference Call and Webcast. At this time, all participant lines are in a listen only mode. Following management's remarks, we will conduct a question and answer session. If at any time during this, talk, this call you require immediate assistance, please press star zero for the operator. Please be aware that certain information discussed today may be forward-looking and that actual results could differ materially. Certain non-IFRS financial measures will also be discussed. Please refer to the company's CDAR filings for additional information on both risk factors and non-IFRS measures. This call is being recorded on Wednesday, September 21, 2022. And I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Eric Alexandre, President and CEO of Orbit Garin. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Sylvie, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. With me on the call is Daniel Maheu, CFO. Following my opening remarks, Daniel will review our financial results, and I will conclude with comments on our outlook. We will then welcome questions. We generated improved financial performance in the fourth quarter driven primarily by sustained customer demand and increased contract pricing in Canada. Revenue was $53.8 million in the quarter, up 5.3% compared to Q4 last year, representing the highest revenue we have ever generated in a single quarter. Our profitability also increased significantly. We generated EBITDA and adjusted gross margin of $5.7 million and 17.3% respectively, compared to $1.2 million and 9.8% in Q4 last year. Increased contract pricing in Canada in the quarter more than offset higher wage, materials, and fuel costs. In addition, worker productivity improved as our newer drillers gain more field experience and our costs related to project ramp up and mobilization declined com compared to recent quarters. We also did not face adverse weather and Omicron-related work disruptions, which were issues that impacted our performance in, in last quarter. As I have previously noted, we incurred significant costs in fiscal 2022 related to driller training and project ramp-ups in Canada and new project mobilization in our international operation. While these costs impacted our margin in the short term, they were necessary in order to scale up our operation to meet increased customer demands. This scaling of our business contributed to our improved fourth quarter results. We expect to continue building on this positive momentum in fiscal 2023. Customer demand for our drilling services remains strong, and we anticipate further improvement in profitability as price increases continue to offset the cost pressures and that are impacting our business, costs related, project, related to project ramp-up in Canada and project mobilization in Chile and Guinea have largely been absorbed and our driller productivity continue to improve. We'll now turn the call over, Danielle, to review our fourth quarter and year-end results in more detail. Danielle? Thank you, Eric, and good morning, everyone. As Eric, Eric knows, our fiscal 20. 22 fourth quarter revenue total a record of $53.8 million. Canada revenue total $42 million, up 10.4% from Q4 last year, reflecting sustained customer demand and improved pricing on drilling contracts. International revenue was $11.8 million, compared to $13 million in Q4 last year. The decline was due to a lower drilling activity in Burkina Faso, personally offset by increased drilling activity in Chile and Guinea. Our drilling utilization rate in the quarter was approximately 59% compared to 66% in Q4 last year, reflecting lower drilling activities in Burkina Faso. Growth profit for the quarter increased to $6.9 million from $3 million in Q4 last year. Adjusted gross margin, excluding depreciation expenses, were 17.2%, up from 9.8% in Q4 last year. Higher margin in Q4 this year were attributable to an increase in average revenue per mate drilled, decreased project ramp-up costs in Canada, and a reduction in mobilization costs 
for new long-term projects in Guinea and Chile. GNA expense were $3.8 million in the quarter, or 7% of revenue compared to $3.9 million, or 7.7% of revenue in Q4 last year. EBITDA for the quarter increased to $5.7 million compared to $1.2 million in Q4 last year. Net earnings were $0.5 million, or one cent per share, compared to a net loss of $2.2 million, or six cents per share in Q4 a year ago. The positive variances were attributable to an increased pricing on drilling contracts, decreased project ramp up costs in Canada, and reduced mobilization costs for new long-term projects in Guinea and Chile. Now turning to the result for the fiscal year end June 30th, revenue for fiscal 2022 was a record of $195.5 million, an increase of 19.7% compared to fiscal 2021. Canada revenue total $145.2 million, an increase of 11.7% compared to last year, primarily due to the improved contract pricing. International revenue increased to $50.3 million, up 50.9% compared to last year, reflecting new long-term contracts in Chile and Guinea. Gross profit in fiscal 2022 was $13.7 million, compared to $20.3 million in fiscal 2021. Adjusted gross margin, excluding depreciation expenses, was 12.2%, compared to 17.9% a year ago. In Canada, our gross profit and margin in fiscal 2022 were impacted by increased driller training program and cost, a decline in productivity because of higher proportion of less experienced driller, adverse weather condition in the third quarter, and higher wage and project ramp up costs. Internationally, we incurred significant mobilization costs related to our new contract in Guinea and Chile. We also experienced supply chain disruption and cost inflation for material and fuel and Omicron-related work interruption across our operation. In addition, our cost of contract revenue was reduced by $2.9 million in fiscal 2021 due to the financial support record from the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy Program. We were not longer eligible for this CEWS program in fiscal 2022. GNA expense were $14.5 million in fiscal 22, which was similar to fiscal 2021. As a percentage of revenue, GNA expense decreased to 7.4% in fiscal 2022 compared to 8.9% last year. EBITDA for fiscal 2022 was $10 million compared to $17.6 million last year. Net loss was $6.6 million or $0.18 cents per share compared to a net earnings of $2.3 million or $0.06 cents per share in fiscal 2021. The negative variances were attributable, attributable to increased driller, driller training costs and project ramp up costs new project mobilization costs, higher costs of material, fuel, and wages, Omicron-related work interruption, the cessation of financial support from the CEWS program, and the reversal of $1.96 million provision from, for litigation in Burkina Faso recorded in Q3 last year. These negative factors were partially offset by increased drilling activity globally and increased pricing on contract in Canada. Now turning to our balance sheet, during fiscal 2022, we generate cash flow of $2.7 million from financing activities. In fiscal 2021, we repaid a net amount of $3.8 million of long-term debt and lease liabilities. We withdrew a net amount of $7.3 million on our credit facility in fiscal 2022, 
compared to a repayment of 4.4 million in fiscal 2021. Our long-term debt under the credit facility, including 1 million US dollar draw from our 5 million US dollar revolving facility, and the current portion was $31.5 million at the fiscal year end, compared to $24.3 million as at June 30th a year ago. The debt was used to support working capital requirements and the acquisition of capital assets, property, plan, and equipment. As at June 30th, 2022, our working capital position was $53.4 million, compared to $54 million at the end of fiscal 2021. Subsequent to the year end, on September 9, we enter into an additional loan with Business Development Bank of Canada, which provides for a term loan of $8.47 million. The loan bears interest at a fixed rate of 6.7% per year, has a 20-year term, and is repayable in 240 consecutive monthly payments. The fixed interest rate may be reduced by 0.2 from November 2023 if we meet certain financial confidence. As a, re as a result of this loan agreement, and in order to extract our head office building from the borrowing base under the credit agreement, we concurrently entered into a third amending agreement to our credit agreement with National Bank. Under this agreement, the amount available for borrowing was reduced from 35 to $30 million, and modifications were made to certain financial confidence applicable to the first quarter of fiscal 2023 and further quarter. I will now turn the call back to Eric for closing comments. Eric? Thanks, Daniel. Our improved fourth quarter performance demonstrates that the investment we made in our business has better positioned us to capitalize on strong customer demand and drive increased revenue and profitability. As I noted earlier, we expect margin to continue to improve as the price increases we have implemented in our contracts offset increased wage, materials, and fuel costs. And we expect continued gains in worker productivity as the newer members of our team gain more field experience. We were pleased to see productivity improvement in Q4. While we are proud of our outstanding driller training program, there is no substitute for working in the field. Customer demand remains strong, and we anticipate continued strength throughout fiscal 2023. Gold and copper prices have declined from their highs earlier this year, but they remain at elevated levels that provides a strong incentive for mining companies to expand exploration and development spending. According to S&P Global Market Intelligence, global non-ferrous exploration budgets are expected to increase 5 to 15 percent in the 2022 calendar year after increasing 35 percent in 2021. This positive outlook is consistent with what we are seeing from our customer in the industry as a whole. Looking ahead, we will remain focused on driving productivity and margin expansion to build value for shareholders. That concludes our formal remarks this morning. We will now welcome any question. Sylvie, please begin the question period. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question at this time, please press star followed by one on your touchtone phone. You will hear a three-tone prompt acknowledging your request. And if you would like to withdraw from the question queue, you will need to press star followed by two. And if you're on speakerphone, we ask that you please lift the handset before pressing any keys. Please go ahead and press star one now if you do have a question. And your first question, sir, will be from Gordon Lawson at Paradigm Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning, everyone, and congratulations on an excellent quarter. Um, can you please talk about... <laughs> Thanks. Um, can you please talk about some of the ongoing challenges in growing contracts, both nationally and internationally, and any pushback issues you're experiencing? Sorry, could you repeat the question? I just missed a part of it. The line was not that good. Oh, okay. Let me. Okay. So, uh, can you please uh, elaborate on some of the ongoing challenges in growing your uh, contract book, uh, both nationally and internationally, as well as any pushback issues you're experiencing? 
Okay. Well, first of all, the challenges we have, especially in Canada, is uh, access to experienced people. While we have our training school here, you know, we're not able to, to push enough people in, into uh, our group, I mean experienced people. So we have to respect the pace that, you know, we are able to do out there. So at some point, it, were, it was very difficult just to serve our actual uh, client in terms of number of machine and meters to be drilled. Uh, we do see a little bit of, of uh, slowing down in the junior uh, financing uh, capacity. So that is uh, another challenge that will show up in the months to come. But on the other hand, we have uh, our, the, our actual client that was asking for more. So now we're better able to serve them with the, uh, the number of, of people we have available right now. And we also recoup some uh, guys that were uh, going away to other contractors uh, in, in the past year and uh, they are coming back, so it's good news for us. We will be able to sustain our growth in Canada. Internationally, uh, you know, our biggest challenge now is, is in Burkina Faso, where we see uh, a lot of things happening in a, in a year and a half, including uh, uh, a coup. Uh, we had uh, a lot of issue with security into the country, uh, and we also had uh, a, a business relationship with uh, a Russian company called North Gold that you know, we had to stop operation. So uh, actually, we are in a process to uh, we're not taking any more uh, contract in Burkina Faso unless uh, we, the ones we have with our actual client right now and we are moving some uh, some equipment out of the country in other west african country uh, or chile or canada right now so that's the main challenge we have internationally uh, we also we were not able to increase prices in, in the last six months now we are doing it in order to absorb the, the cost increase of of, of uh, material and, and logistic costs out there, so this is mainly the challenge we had, but now we are addressing it with, with uh, you know, the, those price increases. So to follow up on that, um, with uh, moving your, your, your rigs out of Burkina Faso, uh, where exactly uh, are you seeing uh, growth elsewhere? Well, it's not uh, already decided. We still have challenge about just pulling out the machine into from Burkina Faso. But, you know, we have a good contract uh, that we start uh, a year and a half ago in Guinea where they are uh, asking for more capacity. So this is one thing we're going to do. And uh, uh, we also see some uh, good chances to increase volume as well in Chile uh, while the copper market is supporting our, our uh, growth out there. Uh, the biggest challenge we will have in Canada, again, would be uh, the people. So this is not a challenge we have internationally. So we do see some opportunity uh, out of West Africa as well as, as, uh, as South America. Okay, thank you. Um, and looking at your balance sheet um, with the increase in debt, I see your statement about being in compliance with all covenants, but are you able to give a little more color uh, as to your numerical limits? Yes, with the new finance thing with, uh, uh, with BDC, we uh, now uh, have a more, um, uh, we distribute the risk of the interest rate increase. So in the next uh, fiscal year of uh, 2023, we, we would like to, uh, we expect to reduce the debt uh, by uh, $2, $3 million at the end of uh, June uh, 2023. And we were very concerned about the, uh, the, the interest rate increasing, you know, and we knew that the, we were financing everything from our overdraft protection. So for us, it was normal just to extract the building here and just put it on a, a long-term basis with a reasonable uh, interest rate, which gives us more flexibility in terms of, of cash position. Okay, thank you very much. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question at this time, please press star followed by one on your touchdown phone. And at this time, Monsieur Alexandre, it appears we have no further questions. Please proceed. If there is no more question, we'll now uh, end the call. Thank you very much for, uh, for participating today and see you next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this does indeed conclude your conference call for today. Once again, thank you for attending, and at this time, we do ask that you please disconnect your lines. Have a good day.